world of Lem. A great war between the continents of Ebros and Alkish is forcibly brought to an end by the Tempest, a cataclysmic storm that rages over the surrounding oceans. An uneasy peace has been forged, with relations growing colder each passing decade. A party of adventurers calling themselves the Hydra are the only ones to notice the cracks in the ice. A race against time before the world is plunged into the freezing depths of total war. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link in a debt to a friend. A homebrew campaign. In session 22 of A Debt to a Friend, the airship bellows above us, with orders being barked by one Lieutenant Magnus Cage. We still have time to secure prisoners, do whatever we need to on the ground before the Pombosof lands, and all his merry men with him. Takavria decides to dash into the water, uh, his legs splashing away, trying to catch the war chief who is bobbing along down the beautiful briny moat. Uh, we weren't taking bets on how many laps he could do. Cornelius also follows suit, trying to hope that he can get a living prisoner that, uh, as well the leader, or at least the supposed leader, of this particular bunch. I uh, reckon I also runs through the, uh, the silly string grenade uh, webbing and tries to secure a prisoner. And I point my firearm at uh, a prisoner trying to flee. Um, with uh, Reckonar heading him off. Tekavreya and Cornelius work together to bring the drowning warchief to the banks closest to the walls of the fort as the airship begins to circle round once more, readying itself to land. They check to see if the warchief is alive. A medicine check of 13 reveals to Tak that there's a pulse, but he won't be breathing for long if nothing happens. He expends some uses of his lay on hands, uh, three points of it, to revive the warchief somewhat. Water projectile vomits from the orc as he's spasming wildly on the ground, just ejecting uh, all this uh, fresh water. Well, I say fresh water, it's fairly stagnant being a moat. Rakanar um, <laughs> slaps one of the restrained orcs um, in the webs, knocking him unconscious, and Cornelius casts whole person upon the war chief, uh, seizing him so that he can't begin to resist in any sort of way. The airship lands to the south, with other sounds being made that we can't really be, uh, hear. Cornelius and Takavria talk about interrogation, realising that the, war, uh, the Orc Warchief cannot talk because he's held by a spell. He, even his jaw is um, held by the para paralytic magics um, by Cornelius' bardic touch. Um, I uh, order the chef, Cookie, to secure our prisoners and uh, and just watch them with a the Rakanar. Uh, Rakanar uh, rolls a perception to hear anchors, but beyond the dust being kicked up by the airship and the, uh, I guess, just the sheer sounds of chaos from the battle before, um, he can't hear much else. Um. I'll tell Rakanar and Cookie to secure the prisoners to the east, uh, where the battle begun for the player characters, except for Tekavria, who was uh, managed to get to the barracks, uh, no, to the ramparts, sorry. And uh, I'll uh, try and hold off uh, the uh, uh, the lieutenant. Cornelius tries to recall if this is a particularly common occurrence: the attack on Watchkeep Lambridge. He rolls an incredibly high score of 18, um, and he's heard of wealthy free states to the west, paying mercenaries to test defences or make life di difficult for Ostergarth. It's not unheard of, uh, although this is the first time he's actually lived through one. Uh, so of course he has heard the propaganda, being an Ostergarthian citizen, our boys in blue, holding them back! Cornelius says to hold the blade to the warchief's neck, and uh, uh, to Takavria, and he says, we're serious. If you move, we, we, we will kill you. And Takavria agrees, putting the warchief in a sitting position, 
and uh, with a blade to his neck. Cornelius rolls with advantage to persuade the war chief of his seriousness. He rolls a natural 20 plus 6 on his first try, so there's no need to crit fish further. And the uh, the war chief has the fight completely sucked out of him. Any uh, ability to grab in, like, just claw his hands into the ground and just grab any roots or stones underneath just completely drains out of him. The strength goes as his. I guess like the almost like the rigor mortis effects of the spell take hold. Attack of rare. Um oh, oh yeah. No, sorry. Cornelius with his role um says that we want to know who paid you. Your contacts, your meeting place, your pay. Attack of rare jabs the blade into his neck further to further remind the war chief of his predicament. The war chief responds. <laughs> The hatred in his eyes boils up, but the rage subsides when he feels the ice cold steel against his uh, hot, uh, against his hot, heated neck. Excuse me, sorry, it's a bit too late for me to do a safe recap. I think he digs his hands into the ground to take away the stress again, but um, he just still can't quite get a grip. He's barely constrained, but constrained nonetheless. I think I was meant to say restrained. That I'm not sure. Forgive me. I'll ask again. Who sent you? asks Cornelius. He rolls persuasion with advantage at 25 and 22, because of course he did. The war chief looks unable uh, able to speak, works his jaw as um, um, Cornelius removes concentration from the hold person spell. <laughs> we didn't get a name, we just got a contract, and we got gold up front with the promise of gold of more. With contracts like that, you tend to live longer if you keep your mouth shut and not ask questions. Contract? Where'd you get the contract? Who's the messenger? asks Cornelius. We were just passing through the area. Never got a look at him. Or his name. Just dropped the contract before us. Cornelius speaks over him. If you hear that voice again, could you pick it out? In a lineup? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. And uh, Cornelius rolls. Maybe for coin? Insight 16 tells Cornelius that that, uh, that uh, the man might, might uh, not be able to recognize the voice, but if there's coin, his, uh, his noggin might get jogging. <laughs> for coin? Huh? And the lives of my warband. Oh, I like sips. That's fair. But if you try anything funny, he will fry you. He will literally breathe fire upon you until you are turned into nothing but ash and bone. Yeah, yeah, I get you. The carrot or the stick, am I right? <laughs> Tacophrius player says that that's such a dad phrase of Cornelius. And I imagine that Cornelius is rocking on the balls of his heels, uh, grabbing his uh, his braces that don't exist, thumbing his, uh, tucking his thumb in between his leg, his, his armor, his leather armor. Tacophrius asks him, "Where would you meet for the next payment?" We would, upon completion of the job, find him aboard Visigrath. Now. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation, because I don't think that's correct, uh, the pronunciation. Maud Visigrath. Um, because I keep hearing the name, I keep thinking I am going to look it up. And... I never do. Maud Visigrath, Maud Visigrath. Oh yeah, yeah it is. I think. Let's bring up this. This is much higher quality. Oh, so it's, so it's spelt Maud V-A-Z-G-R-A-D-H. I'll have to probably put that in the, uh, the on screen, but yeah. Uh, the way I hear it is Ford, sorry, Maud Visegrath, so if that's the pronunciation, uh, yeah, or not, I do apologise. Um, I think for this session recap I'm definitely going to need some feedback, because I'm... I'm not able to do a good job on this one, I don't think. Um, 
And it's a shame because the session deserves better. It really does. So, uh, Maud Physograph, uh, at least Cornelius would know, as uh, Takafri isn't really from um, uh, from Alkesh. Uh, Vaughan Physograph is the most prolific uh, orc and mercenary camp uh, towards the north of Ox Glen, uh, still within the Free States. Takafria wouldn't know much more than that, but Cornelius rules 17 history. There's many uh, mercenary outfits, and it's unofficially the Merc capital of Al Kesh. Tak, um, hold him there. I'll need the commissar to know that the. I'll need the commissar to know that the war chief is safe. We need to hear a voice. And so they scheme with trying to get uh, as many witnesses as possible into a room and trying to perhaps get uh, the war chief to testify. So Cornelius messages me to keep him safe uh, from across. He can just make the spell. And uh, goes a finger pistol and says, You know, uh, look, we need you. We, we need to work together on this plan. Can you do it? And I simply say, understood. A group of figures respond. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, I don't know why I put that. A group of figures respond to the various planets. Okay, so uh, sorry, I think uh, so. through the dust and the fog, a group of figures uh, emerge from the dust kicked up by the airship. The various platoons on the assignment of Lieutenant Cole. On to Rakanar. Uh, Rakanar takes the prisoners aside and hogties them. Um, uh, to which uh, um, he tries to interrogate them, but to no avail. And uh, they say, I'm not saying anything to you, half breed! And uh, he backhands the prisoner with a nine to hit, but uh, he only causes greenish blood to pour out of his mouth. Uh, Why did you attack? <laughs> Just fancied a little stroll. And he uses his bardic inspiration then to empower his original hit, and then backhands him with uh, uh, with uh, a tooth going uh, flying out and knocking the orc unconscious. Uh, the guy in webbing is out cold as Reckonar loots him, finding wickedly sharp weapons, but sadly no incriminating paperwork. The airship unloads with four platoons worth of infantry, with them fanning out. At first glance. Um, I with an 11 perception hear the sounds of battle degrading with an airship buffeting the air around us. A figure strides toward me flanked by a, full, by a small fire team and looks out at the carnage which has appeared. The cook snaps a, a salute. Officer on deck! Salute! At least I think it was on deck anyway. Forgive me if that wasn't the correct term. Um, Lieutenant Cole looks around taking off his gloves and... Uh, Says, my, my, Commissar. What the hell has happened here? And, uh. And, um. I explained to him. Well, Lieutenant, as you can see, there's been an attack. A bandit attack, Lieutenant, which you knew full. which you knew fully well. But tell me. Why. Tell me, Lieutenant, of course. What was so pressing that you would ignore a bandit attack, taking all commissioned officers, half the uh, the vast majority of the forces, leaving Freergate exposed? Should we go to your office and talk about this? With a perception of 15, I hear him mutter under his breath. I told him we shouldn't have taken... We shouldn't have deployed such... We, have, we shouldn't have deployed in such numbers. <coughs> Very well! And so, flanked by his guards, we continue on as they uh, as they fan tactically throughout the buildings. Uh, probably with much more care than uh, the D&D group, uh, than Hydra, when they play Ready or Not. The uh, tacticals are like a SWAT game. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one of the soldiers says, "We've got a live one." I said, "Don't you dare lay a hand on him! This man is part of my team. He is my heavy weapons expert, and you are not to lay a single hand on these political prisoners." The lieutenant looks shocked, but also very angry. <laughs> Do as she says, shall we, Commissar? 
And so we go to the, and so I escort him to the remains of his office. Moving on from that, Cornelius with the perception 13 hears other airships in the distance. I think those are the lieutenant's men coming back. What do you think we should do? He asks Tack. Listen, Orc. We'll have a charade to go through, you and I. Is there anything in your pockets that I should know about? Just some notes on the original contract, but nothing identifying. And indeed, there are orders to attack Watchkeep Lambridge and return to Maud Visigrath upon completion. He also finds 15 com uh, platinum on his person. Hey, I need to add that to the uh, to the, uh, the the party loot. Trusting Corporal Brentwood, he has Cornelius call him over. But the Corporal is, despite his grievous wounds, ministering to the dead and the dying first. Please, Lieutenant, uh, uh, Corporal, just you. You have to trust me with this. Cornelius rolls 27 perception, uh, persuasion to bring him alone, with the private joining, uh, with the uh, private uh, deciding to hang back and uh, help the, uh, the manpower. Uh, but before we go, uh, Corporal, please let me heal you. As Cornelius casts a healing spell, cure wounds, restoring eight HP. Brentwood sighs in relief, but it's this doesn't take away his suspicions. What is going on? He asks, and he brings the Corporal over. My God, a prisoner! We must inform the Lieutenant at once. Both Decafria and Cornelius say at the, uh, at the same time, much to our amusement. It's because of the Lieutenant that we must stay here. The Corporal's hand glides towards his pistol. And Cornelius says, Please, son, we fought together in this battle. We've dined together. And hell, there's men here who've died with us. We're not trying to lead you astray here. Would we do such a thing? If we were... Uh, would anyone here be alive if we were? He rolls 25 perception. Uh, persuasion. Nice. What is this, Cornelius? Uh, uh, why wouldn't you tell the lieutenant? Uh, Takovri, I think you should explain it. But before he does, he whispers in the orcs here. Is this the voice you remember? No says the orc. Uh, uh, Corporal, would you by any chance have any manacles? Uh, no, I'm afraid not, but we, we can find some rope. Attack of Rhea says that because this man is a prisoner of the Commissariat. This is no longer his jurisdiction. I mean, be that as it may, uh, Attack of Rhea, um, shouldn't we tell the Lieutenant? Perhaps, but I want him manacled before we bring him to call you find some? I take a very rolls a natural 20 plus 5 deception. Of course. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, take a very, uh, priest. Uh, I want to thank you for your assistance today. We wouldn't have won without you. He tells the private that the priest and the paladin require assistance with the prisoner. What is your name, War Chief? Asks Take a My name is Bone Splitter. Now, I originally, like, when I heard that, I let out a gasp because I thought that there was someone from the Lost Man of Fandelva. But I'm thinking, nah. Is it? I checked my session recap notes, I'm like, hmm, it doesn't mention Bone Splitter. Hmm. <laughs> well, Mr. Splitter, you're safe for now. Gonilis and Tecavrea talk about how this ore could make the difference. Tecavrea calls us family, and besides, Dragon don't, Dragonborn don't run. I like that a lot. And... <laughs> Cornelius. God, I wish I could have recorded all this, but... He uh, says, Out of the way, Private, this man is a prisoner of the Commissariat, and Commissar Katusha Lost Cows requires the Commissariat to have her Commissar's prisoner. <laughs> He's just throwing my name around like like a, a lot. And it, it was very funny, but it's a shame I didn't get it all down. Um, I, I hate that I keep like just disassociating when I'm listening to other RP, people RP, because it, it's, it's shit. It really shit when I'm trying to focus on other people's RP, and I'm like, I just 
don't even know that I'm zoning out. Oh, I know I'm zoning out and I can't bring myself back in. Oh, it's horrible. So, uh... Yeah, and just trying to type everything up as well. Like I say, I love roleplay heavy sessions, but I cannot concentrate. I can't concentrate on my notes. I'm actually just so engrossed in the in the roleplay at times. Oh dear. Anyway, so the private is like the the, the private isn't scared of this uh, of this threat of, of like the the mention of the commissariat. He's seen a lot of his buddies die. And... Like, this might have been like the first time he's actually seen combat. And... He's... he's tired. And he says, I, I must insist, sir. He, he'd be detained in the proper... in the garrison. They talk about uh, taking the prisoner to me, but he needs some manacles. So they go back and forth about this, and Cornelius persuades with a natural 20 plus 11, which I've added in brackets, four exclamation marks, to tell the private to go stand about 20 feet away from the opening of the wall and monitor for additional threats who may want to either harm or rescue the war chief, which he does so successfully. And, uh, yeah, this private, he's, uh, he's been given a little job to do. Bloody hell, I didn't really get that many, uh, screenshots. Bugger. Okay. Never mind. Um. <laughs> sorry, back to me. Um, so. Inside Lieutenant Cole's office. Guards are posted in every corner of the room. As Cole looks through. And. I ask him. What the hell happened, Lieutenant? A suitably sarcastic response, Bubbles, but he stops. He looks to the window, to the back, and says, You'd be better asking him. I look up into the sky and see clouds swirling, a brief flash of lightning, with the outline of a dragon coming rapidly towards us. I roll perception, natural 20 plus 5. It's not moving, this dragon, until it's... Until it gets closer, and around its neck and its wings are chains leading up to a behemoth sized airship, quite possibly the largest of the battleships I've ever seen, quite possibly the largest in the Empire, uh, in the Kingdom. It descends to the fleet as the corpse of the dragon drops, the walls of the very, uh, the very walls of the fort shake as the battle turns midair, and upon the side is embossed, treated in gold, HMAS. Basilisk. A lighter, smaller airship used for transporting troops when dry docking isn't available makes its way to the centre of the courtyard. The lieutenant turns to me. Prepare yourself, Commissar. He straightens his uniform. From the airship steps a man dressed in the resplendent plate armour, detail in gold underneath his blue robes. He's very high up in the establishment, flanked by stern looking troops. A major barks to the remainder of the troops. I roll 16 history. I can't see who they are, but I can see that they're... Uh, I can't see exactly who they are, but I recognise the emblems as the 229th Banshees, under the direct command of Major Helga, the Banshee Brockner. There's another man who marches toward the keep, as I hear steps entering. Lieutenant draws his legs together. General on sight, salute! Helga, why don't you wait outside? Have the Banshees scour the countryside. Make sure there are no loose ends. The Major responds, Right you are, Major. At ease, everyone. Uh, sorry, the squad walks through. Uh, the general squad walks through. At ease, everyone. The lieutenant looks to me sharply and says, May I introduce you to General Rudolf Hummel? The General Rudolf Hummel. The General. General Rudolf Hummel is the most legendary military officer 
in the entirety of the Kingdom of Ostagarth. Many times has this man declined the position of chief and staff entirely so he can be with his men. Except he's not just a legend himself. He makes legends. He dismisses everybody in the room except for me. And he smiles. And he says, Now, Commissar, speak freely. I explain to him the problems of uh, of the watchkeep. That it was sorely lacking in defense. That a night raid was so easy to happen and that uh, there was a known bandit raid and red dragons about and uh, still this man went on an exercise, a scouting operation of some sort. To which she nods in agreement and says, yes, upon my orders, Commissar. What uh, and I'm just... Uh, uh, sorry, and he says, um, you wouldn't happen to have any problem with that now, Commissar, would you? And I said, forgive me, General, I fail to appreciate the strategic um, understanding behind this. Strate strategic motive behind this. And which he said, explains, well, look to the courtyard. And he points to it. And in there are soldiers now gathering around the body of a young red dragon, Zethrax, the Crimson Plague. It's my understanding, that, Commissar, that uh, there were reports of a red dragon attacking the trade caravans. I had to make a decision. Dealing with a dragon... A bandit attack. I chose the dragon that would threaten far more lives. Understand this, Commissar. As a general, I spend lives, not waste them. The death of the five men that were slain here is tragic. It shouldn't happen and those families will be adequately compensated, I assure you. And I, said, and I was thinking, but how, General? The state of the Veterans Association, the defences of the Watchkeep. What happened here is a travesty, and he, he, he says, indeed, what happened here was a travesty. The resources of our military will be given. No more veterans left out in the cold. This I swear, Commissar. It starts with your signature, if you will be so kind as to co-sign my report. I understand as well, Commissar, that uh, you would like one Corporal Brentwood to be uh, promoted for his uh, duty, which I suggested in my report. And, uh, I agree. All I need you to do is sign this report. And I look over it very carefully, and he watches my eyes gl skimming over every single word, taking every amount in. And it all seems sound. And I said, I cannot sign this until I know the Lieutenant Cole is no longer in command of the garrison. That his playing politics, wanting me reassigned as I go to his desk and take out the letter and show it to him, I said, this is petty. I don't want a man in, like that in charge of this place. Using his power in court to affect military matters, the safety of the kingdom. And I get a stern telling off from the general, saying, yes, that's quite right. But these petty politics, as you call them, Commissar, you failed in your duty. Politics requires direct action or a helping hand, and you did neither. 
you come to me. Like a child with a graze knee. That's not how you do things, Commissar, is it? I'm making that bit up because I don't actually know exactly what I did wrong. Like, I think I need the DM to explain to me because, like, my character would know, but, like, I can't interpret what that meant, so... Um, yeah, not a problem. Just, like, uh, I, I just think I just need it re-explaining because I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, yeah. And uh, he's kind of disgusted as well. Um... When I when he reminds me that I've been out in the field a lot, and uh, he points to Annex J of his report, which I really like. I like that, like like the the technical terms there. The lieutenant will be removed will be moved to a ceremonial uh, unit in Drummouth, where he will be promoted to captain. Promoted to. Uh, a more, uh, I guess, fancy dress uh, unit rather than uh, perhaps a more <laughs> like actual actionable one. So that, that that's handy. The place will get better defended, and Freyagate will call upon more mercenaries for defence if needs be. It's all starting to pull together. I'm thinking, you know what? I can get behind the general's thinking. This is gonna be alright. This is gonna be fine. We're we're gonna make it. He says, and of course, Commissar, you will be surrendering your prisoners to me. And I'm thinking Oh. This is an order, Commissar. To Cornelius and Tachavria. Um, sorry, uh, Rekhanar and I go to Cornelius and Tachavria, grouping up and say, uh, I'm sorry, boys, um, We have to let them go. The effort was... I hope the effort wasn't wasted. But they're no longer political prisoners. They, uh... We've basically done all that we can here. Do you have any... Actionable intelligence? I reckon I did happen to find some notes in the pockets of the soldiers... Uh, of the uh, attackers. Um... Not a whole lot, basically just further details on the contract, nothing entirely significant. And uh, there is a little addendum to the uh, the note on the war chief saying, Don't get caught! in Orkish. And, um, <laughs> uh, it's sort of like ironically. And uh, it also says as well, uh, Ask for Axe Tooth when you get here. We'll find you. Reckonar's notes mentions the attack and how to return for payment. And we talk about releasing Bone Splitter. Takafria gives them the choice. Would you prefer to die here resisting arrest or would you prefer a chance at life with your men over there if we surrender you? As I leave just to keep watch so that, uh, see, I can't be caught. Uh, killing a prisoner, but uh, the members of Hydra could. Entirely out of my hands. And uh, Bone Splitter says, My men, are they all slain? Dagger says, No. Two of them live. I want to be with them. Whatever happens, I want to be with my men. Attack of Rear considers him honourable. I swear to you, Bone Splitter, I will make this right. Through hell and high streams, I will make this right. Hmm. 
You weren't so bad yourself. <laughs> and he looks to Rakanar and says in Orkish, Well fought. <laughs> to which Rakanar says, You weren't so bad yourself. We drag the prisoners into the center where the men are beginning to gather and turn their attentions from the slain wormling to uh, the new found prisoners. We decide now that we're going to have to hurry out of here. Things are bigger than us. This is simply a mystery that is not one that we can solve, at least, immediately. I pocket the intel, knowing that uh, this is the only surviving evidence of a potential trial that may come when it comes to the unjust dealing with these prisoners. We decide on securing transport via airship uh, aboard what's known as the Halcyon. As we are boarding, troopers belonging to the newly brevetted Captain Cole join us. Here is now Ryan going to me and saying, Going somewhere, Commissar. I said, uh, yes, uh, we're leaving this place. We've got other important businesses. Confidential, you understand. Hmm. I try to outpace him, but he's, because of his human legs, he can uh, slightly match my pace, and he's walking next to me. We see the Air Force as we are beginning to board. And the Air Force has only been around for about the past 40-50 years, but has become the most potent arm of the Royal Ostagathian military, as uh, the uh, traditional navy, uh, I, I say it, the traditional navy is in like the Sky Navy, as they sometimes refer to like the navy in like space games and such. Um, who knows, perhaps we might find a spell jammer ship one day. <laughs> that would really derail the game, I think. Um, yeah, um... Yeah, like like because like the sea isn't really much of an option uh, because of the tempest. Um, the Royal Ostagathian military's uh, air force is very very strong, and as well we have an advantage that most of our enemies do not, which is aerial travel. The uniforms of the air force are bizarrely overdesigned, with fairly sky blue grey coats for the men and women walking about, but. Below decks are formal shirts rolled up with dark navy trousers and polished boots for officers or work boots for the enlisted personnel, doing what they need to to maintain and, ma and service the airship. An Air Force officer salutes, with Lieutenant Cole and I snapping salutes back. The human introduces himself. Flight route, Lieutenant Ryder. I understand I have orders to grant you transport. And I notice the cap upon his head with a stag riding atop a thundercloud, which is awesome. I love that. That's, that's a brilliant little emblem. Cole hands over orders sealed by Hummel himself, and I ask, um, would it be so kind of you to drop me off at Flintown? Um, again, commissariat business, I'm sure you can appreciate. And, um, he says, well, we are going to Drummouth, but we can make a quick detour, I'm sure. And, uh, and the lieutenant says, well, Commissar, I shall be bedding down. If ever you want to talk, please l let me know. I uh, board the ship with my boys and their horses, who are perfectly fine. They, they were hidden in the horse hut, in, in uh, completely away from the battle, uh, in a little storeroom. Uh, to the, the northwest of the of the keep, that was handy. That, it was a good job that that wasn't damaged in any way. Nice. I watch from the the decks above as we ascend. I watch the prisoners surrounded by Brockner's banshees. General Hummel walks out, and through the use of the garrison mage next to him, he whispers. And following that, what appears to be some sort of prestidigitation or thaumaturgy, we don't know which, uh, he has his voice boom. Men's and women, for some reason I put there, 
I've also said boon instead of booms. Men and women, <laughs> men and women, soldier for Savostagarth, hear me now! The enlisted troops lean on the railings, watching the, uh, from the airship. The flight crew are doing all they can now to listen to the speech. Today, we have won a great victory in the name of the crown, in the name of our sovereign. The troops cheer the name of the queen. And, uh, this, uh, oh yeah. We are surrounded by dangers in our kingdom. Dangers which, in our laxity, have grown idle. Have caused us to grow idle. Dangers which we have ignored. We have all sworn an oath to Her Royal Highness, Queen Kirsten Angmar the Second. Some... Some of the enlisted say, good old Tom. The name of the Queen. Which is why we can show no quarter to the enemies of the kingdom. We can show no mercy, for we invite a ruin. I ask you, men, to believe in me, so that we may right the wrongs of our comrades, gesturing to the row of five dead guardsmen who lie, clerics casting gentle repose upon them. Together. We shall create a country that is safe, that will not suffer the foreigner, the insurgent. With me, we shall usher in a new dawn. A bright dawn. A noble dawn for Rostegarth. And with that, he pulls out his pistol and shoots the prisoners. <laughs> and with quick succession, they just fall dead to the ground. With nary a thunk or prayer. And the troops yell, Oh mal, oh mal, oh mal. We exit. No longer seeing anything beneath the clouds and the darkness. The DM asks us how we're dealing with the situation. I suddenly feel ill, staggering to either my quarters or a bucket, and uh, the colour in my entire body going from, like, just like, peach to, like, now, like, white and an ill shade of green. Given that the barracks are, given that the quarters are probably quite occupied, I try to find somewhere below decks that is uh, a little quieter and try to heave into a bucket as this goes against everything that I believe in. The unjust execution of prisoners, the inviting war. Even my benefactor Wyatt is a man of peace. It is essential. And there is something else as well that Hummel said as I exited. He said, um, Commissar, Wyatt was right in choosing you. And that's really scary. That's really fucking terrifying. Um, I have tried to take into account now what I've just done at Watch Q Lambridge. And I have basically co-signed the very things that I am against completely, entirety. Cornelius is unsure of what to think. He is loyal to Ostergarth, but does he agree with the methods? This is tearing him apart. Rakanar is upset that the power here has been displayed in such a pompous and arrogant and volatile way and that lives were wasted, especially those of the prisoners. There was no interrogation, there was no real victory. What were a handful of orcs and a dragon compared to what this means for the future? Takavria takes out his pipe, takes a long, deep draw, and lets it out absentmindedly. Or at least we know now what befell Watchkeep Lambridge. 
and that unfortunately for us the shadow of war is looming. He ponders his words and makes smoke rings out of practice and habit more than trying to do so with any finesse. He tries to find me near the engine docks not used the engine decks not used and wishes to speak to me. I'm drive heaving into a bucket. <laughs> We talk about the impending war, about conversations being tough going forward. We may need to talk to Wyatt in person and we must maintain the peace. And I think that Takaria must now know all about Wyatt, as uh, he and I have the same interests. And that we've seen that the Ostagathia military is not uh, unified in this purpose. Rakanar lies on his back, thinking things over, trying to be himself, with uh, Nero soaring through the air around us. Cornelius writes to his beloved, Dear Myra, the outpost was under attack, and there was a brutal battle. Many lives were lost, but the most terrifying thing after the battle happened I saw the largest airship I've ever seen descend from the sky, and a general in the most resplendent armor I've ever seen emerged. After I spent some time with the party I've traveled with, the closest thing I've had to family, we watched his speech atop the airship. The things he'd be willing to do to achieve his aims, and in cold blood, he executed prisoners. It's still in my head. I'm wondering what to try and think of this. I'm trying to find sanctuary thinking of you. I hope to see you soon. We travel to Flinttown. I hope soon our journey will take us to Drummouth, and soon we shall meet again. Love always. Cornelius Bonaparte. I walk from the engine rooms and find myself upon the main deck of the Halcyon. As I'm trying to clear my head, I take a moment to look over the railings, seeing the country I love pass beneath me, and feel a presence next to me. Commissar, Lieutenant Cole says. What happened there? You should ask the General, Lieutenant. Or rather, Captain. Uh, uh, Commissar, uh, did you order the execution by any chance? He asks, wondering if the stereoty uh, stereotype of trigger happy commissars is true with me. Answer the question! Carly, yes, don't answer that to question! Die. Yes, don't. they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell! Not that I know. Uh, I did not, Lieutenant. I would not have gone to such trouble to capture prisoners or to shoot them in the head without getting what I needed. So... Did the General get the information he needed? Not that I know of, Lieutenant, but then that's above my pay grade. <sighs> he looks out among the stars. You weren't long out of the academy than I was. What have they drilled into us, Commissar? Honour? Glory? Not much honour there. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Commissar. I speak out of turn. I silently agree with his words, sensing now that he's not sure what's going on here either. Good night, Commissar. And with that, he dismisses himself. I ask what was good about it. And I remain on deck, unable to sleep. After a few mere hours, compared to the days of travel that we would have been required on horseback, we exit the Halcyon as it arrives at Flintdown. It's a quiet town. A little coastal town. It's the middle of the night, and not much is happening as the final residents make their way to bed, and uh, 
especially after some rather disturbing events here. Red crests march towards as the civilians make their way to the home, startled by the chandelier powered engines of the airship making their way out of the city. The Red Crest I'm speaking to is Sergeant R Ronkerel. Uh, Ronkerel. Ronkerel? Ronchural? I think was it was it Ronchural? I think it was. And Corporal Beren and Constable Beryl. Uh, Beryl. I, I I thought this was going to be like a Thompson and Thompson thing. This is Corporal Baron, <laughs> Constable Baron, <laughs> and uh, they introduce us uh, them, themselves. I say I am Commissar uh, Katusha Lostkaus, and here are uh, my agents. Um, and uh, said, so, and who might you be? I said, well, you're looking at the Flintdown Constabulary, at least <laughs> most of it. It will be a pleasure working with you. I've had a good experience of working with you before. Ah, I'm really sorry, but we really must rest. Is there any ch I'd love to make small talk, but we do need to put down for the night. We've just come back from Watchkeep Lambridge. Uh, uh, is there any chance that you could um, uh, point us in the direction of an inn? Um, to which she suggests the Prancing Pig. Um, an inn that uh, appeals to both the locals as well as uh, travellers coming to and from the place. On the road, uh, Cornelius asks of Omar, uh, and if he's been there. But uh, the uh, the uh, the constable said no. Um, there's been no priest besides uh, yourself uh, here. But if there were any priests to believe, they'd probably be going to the inns and clubs and such performing. You'd hear the music from miles around if there was one here, believe me. A barkeep flinches as the door opens and he's human, uh, balding and wide around the waist. It's in the constabulary he breathes a sigh of relief. C -c Can I help you, c -c constables? <sighs> Don't worry about it, Mirth. They're guests for the night. You could probably use the trade. And so, we settle into this, uh, in, which I imagine probably smells of fish. In fact, the whole place probably smells of fish. It says, uh, well, b welcome to the p -p -p Prancing Pig. Uh, what can I c c get for you uh, for five silver pieces? We have uh, Ramum and uh, b -b -b Board. I don't know why I've just given him a stutter all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> God. I pull out of my pouch. Uh, I say, look, oh, I'm really tired. I just need a room and a bottle of drink. And with that, I pull out just like a random... I just snatch a load of coins from my pouch and just slam. What oh, amounts to 15 gold pieces. Like, there was one platinum, several gold, silver, and copper. And he's, his eyes light up and he says, uh, Thank you! Um, and, like, he puts most of the money away into, like, a separate pouch. But he keeps the, rest, uh, the, the, the amount owed. And, um... We can pay food and such. So I said to the boys, I'll be in my room if you need me. Just like dragging a bottle of mead with me. The others remain to eat. Cornelius has soup, Rekina has himself an ale, and Tegavria has himself quite a hearty uh, meal and a shower. Uh, which I think we all need after this experience. And uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, as well, the most important part. The reason why the locals are scared is because there's been some spooky murders. Ooh, which we already know about. So, I think that's going to be a nice little break that we're going to be able to investigate these murders. And so, in the finale, in the epilogue of this session, we think about what we've seen, what we'll have to do, and what, in some cases, is the future of our very homelands. A sleep takes us for whatever restfulness, uh, restlessness we have. We drift off, uh, despite our restlessness, we drift off nonetheless. And with that, we end session 22 of a debt to a friend. And what an incredible session it was. Uh, I loved it from start to finish. It was incredible. And it took a complete left turn that I was not expecting, like... The Cold War is hotting up, and, um, yeah, it's, 
it's good. It's really good. Like, I'm glad now that we're, hopefully, while in Flint Down, we're going to have a, um, perhaps a bit, uh, more relaxed <laughs> pace. Um, like, hopefully, like, the pressure of the war is slightly alleviated. But, if not, hey, it's it's good. And like this is the world we live in now. Like this is this is the, the world of the land now. It's it's on the brink of war has never been closer. And if we have to go to Bracca and we have to go to the Free States, what's happening in Ostagath in the meantime? It's yeah, it's 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 hotting up. And it's really good. It, it's, it's fantastic. All of this is brilliant, and uh, I can't wait to see what the next session brings. But Flint Down does actually sound really nice because, like, um, my partner and I, we want to move to the coast one day, and so this might be like a nice little, a nice little treat to prepare us. The seagulls honking away in the night, which they don't actually stop, which the DM noted. I like that little detail. Um, yeah, so. I think that'll be nice. Yeah, I can get behind the session. There's murders. There's murders. But it's a nice coastal town. There's murders. There are murders that have to be solved. But it's a nice coastal town. Murders. Lots of murders. Spates of murders. Festooned with murders. But it's a nice coastal town. So, I look forward to solving the murders in the coastal town. So yeah, uh, I'm just blathering. So thank you ever so much for watching. Take care, it's tough now. And um, yeah, I might add, like, if my viewers can give me some feedback on this session recap, like what kind of details do you want? Do you want like uh, all the details? Every single character's actions? Do you want to hear more about other characters, less about my character? Um, is there anything you want me to ask the DM? Uh, that they can sort of say above the table? Um, or in character knowledge and things like that? Um, more character details you want me to reveal in videos if I can ask them of the players and they're okay with sharing them because I want to try and make these videos better uh, and if I've got like things that I need to improve on and things that um, like need to be removed or things that you know should be added then that works for me I, I think that structure would really help um, going forward but yeah anyway thank you ever so much for watching take care and this might be the final session of A Debt to a Friend until after Christmas. Well, it will be after Christmas, but perhaps after the New Year. If that's the way it is, though, what a way to end 2022. Thank you ever so much for watching. Take care, and ta for now.